Hello and welcome to MaxSurf Webinar 8 Video 1 on Motions Prediction using SeaKeeper. This is an introductory series of videos on the basic concepts and procedures for motions prediction. Let's start out by taking a look at our overall objective. What we would like to do is calculate the response of a vessel subject to user-defined sea conditions. The workflow that we follow is first to open up the MaxSurf model and measure it, and then divide that vessel up into a series of transverse strips for the purposes of calculation. We also need to define the range of vessel speeds and headings that we want to consider, and we need to define the sea state in terms of the period, frequency, and significant wave height of the waves. We're going to use the linear strip theory method for calculating the vessel motions based on the transverse strips that we've measured. And then after the analysis is run, we're going to post-process the results to calculate motions criteria such as motion sickness incidence and motion induced interruptions. We'll normally compare those criteria against acceptable levels and we probably also want to compare the overall motion of the vessel against other similar vessels. We then access the uh, acceptability of our results and perhaps modify our vessel or loading conditions as a result. So what can we learn from sea keeping analysis? The first thing is we can learn a few things about performance, the amount of added resistance that might occur because of the vessel's motions through waves. We can also calculate the probability that the propeller will emerge and reduce performance that way. As far as passengers and crew go and their comfort, we can calculate motion sickness incidence, which is the probability that passengers or crew will be ill. And we also have a range of sea keeping criteria that we can calculate, including the probability of slamming, the probability of green seas on deck, and we can calculate the accelerations at different locations on the vessel and use those accelerations to calculate the forces on cargo on deck. Uh, just as an aside to that, our multi-frame structural analysis program has a new load case which is designed for calculating inertial loads due to accelerations. So you can take the accelerations from SeaKeeper and use them to calculate the structural loads on a supporting structure on the deck of your vessel. It's worthwhile understanding a bit of the theory behind SeaKeeper. The basic equations of motions of a vessel are very complex and so we use strip theory to simplify the problem by dividing the vessel into strips and reducing it down to a 2D calculation uh, problem. So here we see we've got a vessel with uh, a transverse strip and then we can consider the different masses and forces and uh, damping acting on that strip. Typically to get a good result we need somewhere between 20 to 40 strips along the vessel. Uh, we compute the mass and damping effects on each strip and then integrate all of those different sectional values together to get our overall global values. The equations of motion of the vessel are solved at each of the different frequencies. Of course a true state, sea state is made up of waves of a range of different frequencies and we can obtain the overall heave and pitch motion response. If you remember back to high school physics you may recall a problem where we looked at a mass that was moving up and down and had a spring and a damper attached to it and uh, the equations of motions are mass times acceleration plus damping times velocity plus stiffness times displacement is a function of time. What we're looking at here is exactly the same problem where we have the mass of our vessel that's being accelerated, there's damping due to the motion of the vessel through the fluid and the stiffness is our buoyancy force. As we push the vessel further down into the water, the restoring buoyancy force acts like a spring to push it back up. And of course, our function of time is our sea state itself. From those equations of motions, we can calculate the actual motions of the vessel in terms of potentially six degrees of freedom. Three linear translations, our sway from side to side, our surge forward and aft, and our heave up and down, and our three angular rotations, our yaw about a vertical axis, our pitch about a horizontal axis, and our roll about a longitudinal axis. Now in practice, it's the pitch and heave and the roll that we're most interested in in a vessel, and so SeaKeeper solves uh, for those three degrees of freedom. The heave and pitch motions, which are coupled together, are solved using the linear strip theory, and then the motions are due to roll are solved using linear roll damping theory. 
There are a number of assumptions involved and uh, you should be aware of those. The first is that the vessel rotates about the centre of gravity. It also assumes that uh, the vessel is wall-sided at the waterline and when we look at the sections we'll see more about that. The length of the vessel should be significantly longer than its breadth. Really a length to beam ratio of at least four or five uh, for this type of method is appropriate. And the beam of the vessel should be significantly less than the wavelength. Uh, you shouldn't try and analyze the motions of a very wide barge, for example. The beam does have to be quite a bit smaller than the wavelength. So that's our overall setup of uh, the basic concepts for analyzing motions with Seakeeper. Uh, in the next video, we'll look at setting up the model inside the program. Thank you for watching.